Hey. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, oh no. Doing problems. <laughs> it's episode uh, 65. And if you've had a chance to see 64, my goodness, you saw some editing. <laughs> oh, I did about that. Yeah, uh, episode 64 was um the lot my favorite part of editing it. So uh, well, first of all, it's episode 65. 65. Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics and occasionally freeze for four minutes. Yes. <laughs> um I should be fine now because I didn't do anything. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. It's probably fine. Well, it rained last week, right? Yeah, which, you know, shouldn't be a problem. But I will say, when it rains in New York, it breaks everything. <laughs> a city where it rains pretty frequently and a city that they've been working on for 400 years. Sure. Um, there's always construction and scaffolding and stuff. They're trying things, but it, when it rains, the subway is late. And a lot of parts of the subway just don't work. They're like, oh no, there's no Q train because it's raining. <laughs> uh, it's really crazy how it's like the whole city is made of cotton candy. <laughs> and if it gets wet, everything goes to hell. I guess it makes a little bit of sense in that, well, it, it is a very old city that's built straight up into the air on this tiny island. Yep. And, and there's new stuff built on old stuff. New York is built, so other cities are built like, uh, like the way construction works. New York and Chicago seem to me the closest thing to cities that were built via the process of evolution. Yeah. Because the old crap is still there. Right. And it gets absorbed. Or yeah. Around or under. Yeah. I've always, like when explaining evolution to people, I've always, I always said if, 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 uh, if things were made the way, if bodies were made, via just uh you know i'm not explaining this well i'm gonna start over i'm gonna edit that out <laughs> uh, zoom is fine i'm broken oh damn it it's always <laughs> it's raining on you yeah that's right well like you wouldn't find in the middle of a skyscraper at the very bottom an outhouse that it evolved out of yeah that's what you wouldn't find whereas you kind of do find that in human bodies you find wreck remnants of the garbage that we used to be yes i'm explaining it correctly now yeah and in new york and chicago you'll find that chicago quite beautifully you'll find the original city that burned down uh in right. some of the catacombs they're kind of cool that's really cool yeah and you will find weird think choices they made like maybe you know this uh chicago at one point raised the whole city by like two inches I, I don't know about this. To fix their plumbing. Yeah, because they <laughs> had a plumbing issue where the plumbing just wasn't running correctly because, you know, what you want with plumbing, plumbing, no matter how advanced it ever gets, always depends a little bit on gravity. That's all. Right. And Chicago was sort of flat. And what they needed is they needed to go like that just a little bit. So that the water would go like that. And so there was this big undertaking where more or less they came up with an interesting solution, which is they raised everything, you know, which is absurd, but that's what they did. Why? So just one end of Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> just like, we're just tilting. Yeah. More or less everything, you know, so not everything, but more or less, yeah. And then obviously after that, when they built it, they went, hey, don't build this exactly flat. I'm sure they did that. <laughs> Lesson learned. Yeah. Chicago's well, a, half ahead. of the problem here is that, you know, I think all the, they have the sewer lines are correctly tilted, but a lot of parts of the subway and the subway tunnels are either perfectly flat 
or they have areas where it goes like this and water can gather oh yeah and then there's a whole lot of electronics down there yeah <laughs> and fuse boxes and i don't know how things work but it, things that uh, aren't supposed to get wet yeah uh, they get wet because there's no drainage yeah. there's a whole there's a tour you can take which we did take a, uh, a subway tour where they will take you down in the tunnels and show you the history and they'll show you like a, a wall that's just patched and they're like oh yeah the, if you break through this there's a whole other tunnel that goes from this street all the way to that street but uh it's out of use there's tracks in there but it's just empty and probably full of uh rats and water wow and old people but they just there's like hundreds of those all over the city because the way the city evolved on the surface it suddenly was like, well, nobody's going that way anymore because well, all the stuff's over here. So we don't need that one. Oh, wow. So God only knows what's going on in there. And the, I guess it's too much money or something to just fill it. Or I guess there's no reason to fill it. There's, yeah, there's no real reason to fill it. And it would be a huge undertaking, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so they're just, and you can go to like the old city hall station which is a beautiful ornate subway platform with you know lots of mosaic and tile and it's just not being used right it's not bricked off either so <laughs> you can go look at it but uh, no train will ever come because well, they built a new city hall station closer to where city hall ended up being yeah and but, i bet you that platform is much prettier than the one that's being used absolutely of course because it was a long time ago and they were, well, I don't know, people were tried a little harder, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, the, the men wore hats. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. That's, yeah. that's dope. I would like to take that tour. It's really cool. It was so long. <laughs> yeah. And we got this guy, Gary. Uh, it's called Tours by Gary is the name of his one-man company. Uh, it was fucking great and he had the best accent and ended every explanation with uh so uh there you go <laughs> that was because he, he never could wrap it up how many people do you think or even just a percentage of people because i bet the actual number is ridiculously high go through there especially if they are living in new york or thinking of living in new york and they see that bricked off part of the tunnel and i how many people say to themselves, oh, I wonder, could I break in there and just live there for free? Could I make a little apartment? There's definitely, um, there is one such area, like if there's a platform and a section of tunnel that um, they will have like raves in, uh, fully illegal without anyone's permission. Sure. If, you know where the right manhole is. You can get down into this area. <laughs> It'll be like a fucking DJ. And it's the city's crazy, but it that's, doesn't work when it rains. Oh, that's great. There was, so I watched this little video about a, um, it was about a mall. And this particular mall, there was, they, they had figured out that in constructing the mall, there was just this one area because, you know, this store bought, this area and it affected how they built this thing and then there just ended up being this area between a few uh businesses that was just an empty weird space yeah and some people actually did put an apartment in there for a while and it ended up being a semi an art project but i think art project is what you call it so that people don't call you a squatter because that's what they were but no no it was an art project but they fucking moved furniture in there and they figured out oh you could run uh and now this is just stealing they figured out oh you could run this electric cord here and we could get electricity in here and we could have a refrigerator and right yep i mean if you're gonna steal be interesting about yep. it and like all things that break down, it broke down because somebody ran their mouth. Yeah. God damn it. 
but it lasted a long time. There's probably people living in that tunnel, but probably not living particularly well. Yeah, that's yeah. the other thing that goes on here is um, there are people living everywhere. Definitely in some subway tunnels, there are like homeless cities, yeah. encampments. Um, in the park here, Prospect Park, very beautiful. Um, same designer as Central Park, but there's like a deep woods section in the back there and there's just a lot of tents yeah and people who live back there um a lot of uh, out of necessity and a few uh cuckoo birds who want to be off the grid um yeah but yeah if there's because the thing about new york is there it's it is an island mm -hmm. or at least manhattan is and so like space is a premium yeah, so if there's an open space. Somebody will uh, live in it. I always think that it's got to be one of the worst parts about being homeless. Obviously, the whole thing sucks. It just <laughs> does. Of it's great. But one of the things that's got to stink is that because people are going to be homeless for disparate reasons. Right. And so you're going to be homeless because of poor luck sometimes and the system failed you in any number of things. And you're going to do your best. And then you're going to be next to person who's homeless because their connection to reality is tenuous at best. Yeah. And that person is dangerous. Yes. You don't even live anywhere, but your neighbors uh, suck. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's pretty awful. You know, and if you're, you know, and when you have a house or you're even when you're renting, you have a collective commitment to not setting it on fire, which keeps you from doing that most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> not always. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you want to talk about exceptions? Or sure, you... sure. Here, I, here's one exception <laughs> that I can think of. <laughs> my uh, my wife's sister, uh, her, she lives in a duplex, and her the house next to hers, which I have to stress, it's a duplex. They're connected. Yeah, yeah. They are this, they're more or less the same place. A duplex is like you get the joy of living in the in a house with the joy of not being in a house and some dummy being next to you. Yeah. It combines <laughs> yeah. the all of the things. Um, but their duplex caught on fire and there were cars in there. And it's because nobody is good at making meth, despite what breaking bad tells you. Yeah. No one's actually, that should, there should be a part of the, like later Walter White should be missing fingers. <laughs> he really should. Or, you know, if anyone has the competency to make meth safely and effectively, then they can probably just get a regular job. Yeah. 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 It's, it's uh, an occupation peopled with uh, incompetent folks yes exactly you know i mean jesse is even more competent than he would be in real life yeah. um, but anyway the little house catches on fire and in the video i hear this voice and i make fun of the woman in the video oh oh no it was my wife's sister but <laughs> oh, she no. kept going somebody go move the cars who are you asking to go in move the who are you saying hey you you don't look like you're worth a Taurus. You go, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? Goodbye, cars. Yeah, goodbye, cars. Somebody, bit, yeah, somebody sit on top of that tank of fuel. Yeah. Now's a good time. If you want to make the money to buy the new car, live stream the explosion. It might go viral because it's going to look cool. But don't ask somebody to go move the car. <laughs> Weirdly uh, enough, you can't blame her for not thinking straight. No, absolutely not. And she had done all the other right things. She got, she got her doggy out safely, which is good. And she got the kids out safely. Um, but again, duplex. So, oh well, you lose everything. She lost nothing somehow, which is really great. Really great. No smoke damage. Somehow her car was fine. So again, we didn't need to move your car, Melody. <laughs> uh somehow her car was fine thankfully 
uh, and they stayed there that night, which I don't think I would have. Yeah, I don't think I would have either. Yeah. Uh, and also, she should probably be getting uh, different neighbors. She will, for sure. Uh, I, now, funnily enough, this is not the first meth fire I've seen in my life. I used to be an apartment manager at this place. Oh, and okay. one night, there was a tenant. And if you've ever been, uh, owned an apartment building or... And I, I'm sure it varies from city to city. But um, if you've ever managed an apartment, it is very difficult to get people out for good reasons. It, yeah. If you have a really justifiable reason to get rid of somebody, it's hard to get them out. Funnily enough, it's easier to get them out for bad reasons when you shouldn't be evicting them. And I think half of it is because when you're evicting somebody for a bad reason, you're probably evicting someone who's reasonable. Right. So they're ultimately going to go, oh, man, can I figure out somewhere else to go so I don't have to deal with this hump? Right. Whereas if you're evicting the meth folks, they're going to stay. They're going to stay as long as they can, despite all the laws they're breaking. It's a lot of stuff to take apart. Yeah. But they finally did get evicted after they set part of the building on fire. Oh. Yeah. And they were hoarders. Oh, great. So if you don't, if you haven't put it together, hoarding is a great way to collect stuff that burns. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> you're collecting tinder. Yeah. There was so much weird, like, I guess you, here's something funny they did. So they used to run regular regular um yard sales because i guess that's how she was paying rent but <laughs> running right yard sales all the time and you could tell she was selling stolen stuff but i'm like i called the cops once they didn't do anything i'm like okay great i did my part i'm whatever but one time i had a tivo do you all remember tivo who remembers tivo oh i remember the sound yeah satisfying sound i liked my tivo well mine broke so I discarded it and put it in with the recyclable where you put the electronic trash. Mm -hmm. And uh, two days later, they were having a yard sale and they were selling a TiVo. <laughs> <laughs> really good price on a TiVo. Oh, I'll bet. Not a great price considering it was a broken TiVo. <laughs> <laughs> now, were they admitting that part? I don't think so, no. Oh, they had even is... kind of cleaned it up, which was kind of funny. <laughs> I was like, well, somebody's going to think they're getting a deal. And probably someone will go, oh, is this one of them that comes with the lifetime? Oh, sure it is. I'm sure that's what happened. <laughs> yeah. The paper is in the box, probably. <laughs> um, I would like our listeners to do something. Well, first, keep listening despite all our Zoom problems. That's one thing. That's one thing. But uh, last week, we talked about a matter of trust. And I watched the video again. There is way more stuff than we even talked about. So if you think about it, I would love to see in the comments, you tell me what you think the weirdest thing in that video is, because there's a lot of weird things. And I think he was doing a Beatles thing a la Sgt. Peppers. Oh, boy. That is my new conclusion. That's I think the good. reason there's a Spider-Man on the wall is <laughs> just because there's going to be odd things. There's a guy in the background on the street who I swear is in a pose from a different Billy Joel album cover. Oh, man. And I think that's on purpose. So you tell us what you think the weirdest thing in that video is. First of all, I, I want to play, which means I have to watch this video again. Yeah. Um, yeah, do, please. I'm and, gonna. And then uh, what did I pick? I picked Traveling Prayer. Traveling Prayer. From uh, Piano Man. From the Piano Man LP. Uh, this is uh, bluegrass? <laughs> it's pretty much bluegrass. Right? Some, some, yeah, some hybrid of it. There's what? a banjo in there? There's a banjo. There's a, uh, I think it's called a mouth harp now. A mouth harp, yeah. Thanks, cancel culture. Yeah, yeah. an Israel harp. <laughs> <laughs> A yeah. chosen people harp. A chosen people. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, there's a lot of uh, wacky instrumentation. And there's banjo, I think, in other songs on that album. Yeah, that's a, it's what, a, what a good album, of course. I think if you're going to bring in a banjo guy right. and pay him like whatever the rate is, I'm like, well, can you play on this other song too while you're here? Yeah, we got you for the hour. So, yeah. so <laughs> yeah. let's <laughs> travel in prayer. We knock that out. Get all the solos, get, record a bunch of crap. We'll put it in other songs. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. The and the, the songs are in these keys. <laughs> the um, How would you describe that drum? The drum feels like a marching band drum in the beginning. Yeah, is it probably like a snare? Yeah, but not just, but the style. Is that like marching band style? Because it's not rock and roll drum. It is a little bit of that like Civil War. <laughs> yeah field drumming um which i imagine has colored bluegrass to some degree absolutely absolutely so definitely i'm not speaking with any authority as a music historian I, yeah i'm gonna say it's colored that in the same sense of like it's the drumming from the southern side of the war <laughs> it might be what is called a field snare which i only know from Good Night Saigon has a field snare in it. Oh, right on, right on. It it's a uh, that it's was a, gonna be the trivia question. Oh no. Was it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it uh it's got a nice little driving beat. It uh never lets up, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And then the piano, um, I'm trying to think there's that the one break where he just kind of goes nuts. Yeah, it's really like a little rag. Ragtime, that's what I was trying to think of. It's got that kind of feel to it. Yeah. Like when you'd go see an old-timey production of something and there'd be the guy in the middle. Or you get, you see, like, it, honestly, the piano playing of a guy who works at Disney when you walk by a place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In and a I, red and white striped jacket. Yep, yeah, and I love it. And it's got a fake ending. Uh-huh. But not bad, not like, oh, come on, you're trying. No, just it works. <laughs> yeah. It and stops. It sort of, uh, clears the deck for uh, some real good uh, mouth harping. Yep, some real good uh, people who are not good with money. I don't know, something. <laughs> uh, controls the media harp. Is that better? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's really funny. Why did they call that that? Why did they used to call that instrument meow, 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 the juice hey, harp? Wonder. Why? I'm going to Google it. That's such a weird thing. I'm going to guess that it's it's got to be some horrible answer that you're like, oh, no. Like, it's like, well, you know, they wouldn't buy a full-sized harp. Right. Is that what <laughs> right, it is? Right. Yeah, it's probably the easy to steal. <laughs> This is the kind of harp you'd use to kill Jesus. Okay. Well, it's uh, originated in Mongolia, is what I'm learning. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and according to Wikipedia, has no relation to the Jewish people. Oh, well, that's nice, I guess. But then why would you call it that? Or is it just, is it because language is idiosyncratic and it just sounds that way? It might be that. It might be, yeah. It might be a, a bastardization of jaw harp. Oh, okay. Or whatever the Mongolian word for it is sounds like Jews harp. Okay. Well, okay. is it a nice one? It ends up being a not racist reason. That is nice. How rare is that? <laughs> of course, Wikipedia could be lying to us. Yeah. Controlled by the Jews. <laughs> so that's true <laughs> oh gosh that's uh, fantastic you can never know anything yeah that's true <laughs> uh one of my favorite norm mcdonald jokes is there and he did it on weekend update and somebody had gotten in trouble i don't remember who for saying something anti-semitic about jews controlling the media and they issued a public apology and norm's yeah. joke was he goes and now that they've issued that public apology the Jews have said he can work in Hollywood again. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Good joke. Good, Good old joke. rotten human being in a beautiful way. <laughs> yeah. The best. The best um, terrible guy ever. Yes. So 
here was the thing. I said this last week, and I'm still not sure. I can't figure out if I've ever heard this before. Maybe it's I have. True. It, it seems like the kind of song, uh, it's very much not like any of his other stuff. Yeah. Um, maybe that's why you can't remember, because there's no part of it where you go, oh, this guy's got to be Billy Joel. Yeah, but I can't remember if I haven't heard it either. <laughs> I was like, I, may, have I heard this before? Because what strikes me about it is maybe I've heard it, but also maybe I haven't, and I'm remembering the music man because it also has a right. little bit of that in it. It has a little bit of musical right. theater Almost vibe to it. Patter, patter singing. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. 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 Patter it's, singing uh, is the right thing because it's like there ain't a lot of notes going on, but it's a lot of nice singing. It's a lot of nice singing. It probably is closer to ragtime than bluegrass, but certainly it's yeah. a real much mosh of everything. Yeah. Also, is it called Travelin with a yeah, it is. It is with a sky comma. <laughs> Traveling prayer. Gary Goldman, sky comma. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i call it now i love me some gary goldman that's great uh all right release date november 9th 1973 the album piano man that album cover is always i'm always like wow that album is a weird cover it's fine it's spooky it is spooky yeah it's spooky uh weird ghost with the thyroid problem <laughs> fat-faced <laughs> ghost yeah so, yeah all right, let's start into this. I'll start. Hey, right. Lord, take a look around tonight and find where my baby's going to be. Hey, Lord, would you look out for her tonight because she is far across the sea? Hey, Lord, would you look out for her tonight and make sure she's going to be all right and things are going to be all right with me? That's a fun lyric. I like it. It's a very generalized prayer. Yeah. Um, are we, I think we're meant to believe, well, I mean, it's in the title. He's, he's on the road, but it doesn't feel like he's on the road as a rock and roller. I don't know. It feels like he's a sailor or <laughs> something, right? Yeah. I think, I think he's painting that picture. Maybe. I, is he on the road or is she on the road? I mean, I mean, I mean, obviously inclined to think it's him because he is a traveling musician. Yeah. All, almost feels like she's out there somewhere. Oh, that's true because of, he wants the Lord to find out where she's going to be. Yeah. So he would normally, he would know, oh, you're going to be at the house, but no, she's traveling. Maybe that, <laughs> yeah. I'll be, I'll be here at the house. <laughs> uh. Far across the sea. I mean, you know, Billy Joel has done a lot of references to like sea going stuff for uh, very well too. So I don't know. It's it's implied it's a boat trip, right? It's it's bringing to mind what was the song uh, where he was clearly some sort of layabout and his uh, lady had some office job. Oh right, always doing. <laughs> I'm busy doing stuff. Right, and that was yeah his problem with her. That's right. You know, it was kind of his problem. He's like, oh, she's always doing work. <laughs> so I feel like she's on a business trip. He's yeah. uh, at the house. Yeah. Uh, working on <laughs> that phrase at the house keeps making me think of uh, Letterman. Because <laughs> he would never say, I was at home. He would say, you know, Paul, I, I was at the house. Yeah. Watching, uh, watching the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching the TV. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, just don't ask me why I can't buy milk. Uh, right, but you, but you can't buy milk. Some, some, something happened. I don't want to talk about why I can't buy milk. All right. Well, you know, you be, hey, hey, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm here if you want to talk. <laughs> Our first guest. <laughs> Let's we'll just do the whole episode. Oh, uh, uh, I just hit on a pretty good part of the impression of Paul. I just realized is this part. Ah, I'm, here. I'm here if you want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I got to eat dinner with Martin Short and Paul Schaefer. One oh, wow. After a show, I had to write a little show for Martin Short. 
that wow. was insane and it was a little fundraiser thing and afterwards it was like you have to have dinner with paul and me and so i had dinner with them um which was great and paul schaefer had like it looked like he was wearing 10 super bowl rings <laughs> he had so much jewelry on like <laughs> eating this little hotel salmon uh oh. and they're just, like doing bits uh and <laughs> They were supposed to go somewhere, but they were putting it off because Lauren was going to be there. Um, and I was like, oh, what is it? You do not want to see Lauren? Do you, some reason in particular you don't want to hang out with him? And Martin Short, he grabbed <laughs> Paul's wrist and, he's, and he said to me, do you know how you have that one aunt? <laughs> It's like, I get it. <laughs> yep. It, Lauren Michaels is their aunt they don't want to see. <laughs> That's fantastic. The fucking best. If you didn't like him already, then you're like, Andy doesn't want to hang out with Lauren. That's pretty <laughs> great. Uh, not for not because he's a bad man or anything. No. So you know how he, <laughs> I forgot about that. That's oh, fantastic. Great. Oh, so she's far across the sea. Yeah. Hey, Lord. All right, I'll do the next little chunk here. Yeah. There's a lot of, he sings very fast, so there's a lot of words. There are. Hey, Lord, would you look out for her tonight and make sure that all her dreams are sweet? Said now, would you guide her on the roads and make them softer for her feet? Hey, Lord, would you look out for her tonight? And make sure that she's going to be all right until she's home and here with me. Okay, so she's for sure on the road. She's for sure on the road. And uh, it's like, uh, just uh, take care of my lady. That's It's very sweet. I really <laughs> want to believe she's a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, I mean, she could still encounter some roads. Yeah, well, you know, Not roads... Yeah, roads are could be poetic because you know, oh, yeah, metaphor, they're all the yeah. roads. I just like the idea of it just being reversed, and she's like a long, longshoreman lady, a long, a longshore person, yeah, a longshore person. <laughs> but that's pretty great because it's her that she, yeah, it's absolutely it's her that's on the road, ah. yeah. And he's yeah, uh, he's there, he's back at the house waiting on her. Yeah, he's making things nice. He's, you know. I feel he, like uh, this might be this dude's first prayer. <laughs> uh, in a sweet way. Yeah. Like it's, not, it's not formal. Yeah. It's sort of generally asking for things you want to happen for a, a person that you like. Yeah. It's just like, uh, yeah, what do I want? Uh, make sure her dreams are sweet and the roads aren't too hard. <laughs> and, uh, you know. The, the shampoo at the hotel isn't weird. <laughs> yeah. She hates that waxy hotel shampoo. And she's far enough away from the elevator that she doesn't hear every dummy who comes up. Yeah. Have you ever been on the road, by the way? I know you've been on the road, but have you ever been on the road and you got the room close to the ho to the damn elevators? Oh, yeah. And I always have the immediate thought and we're like, ah, convenient. But yeah. no, it's not. It's the worst. No, just constantly, especially if it's, man, whenever I do like a Vegas thing, because it's always drunks who are having oh. the time of their life. Oh, buddy. Don't oh, I know. God, just got done doing stand up. I'm perfectly happy. I'm wide awake. Then I'm like, ah, time to sleep. And that's when four o'clock drunk comes to the elevator. Yeah. And then they, it's always drunks that come out together. They're not in the same room yeah so they have to stay in the hallway and yell at each other oh god yes about how, whatever they're doing how nice it was to see each other how funny the dumb thing they did was Ugh. yeah yep. well, it must be better if they weren't getting along because then they wouldn't talk so much <laughs> right <laughs> whatever happened to stony silences right. in Vegas hotels <laughs> that's right Oh, would you guide her along the roads and make them softer for her feet? He's expecting a lot from God. Look, I made the roads the way I made them, but 
the roads is roads. If they're too soft, then I got then when it rains, no roads. Yeah, yeah. You've clearly never made roads. Maybe don't pray until you understand roads. <laughs> <laughs> hey Lord, would you look out for her tonight? Is if she is sleeping under the sky. Hey, Lord, make this sure the ground she's sleeping on is always warm and dry. So he has a relationship with a lady. He doesn't completely know what she's doing. <laughs> she, she, all I, yeah, all he knows is that she left. Yeah. And is probably coming back. Like, it does he think she goes, well, she's on a road trip, but I don't know if maybe she's actually a smuggler. I don't know. So <laughs> she says, yeah. but make sure the ground is always warm and dry. Hey, don't you give her too much rain, but try to keep her away from pain. No, I don't like that because my baby hates to cry. I just don't like, hey, don't give her too much pain, but, but, but try to keep her away from pain. Um, Because the, the sentence is structured as if, Hey, don't give her too much rain, but we all know that if you don't have enough rain, you're in pain. Because that's what the butt means, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a, a little bit of a mess. Yeah. Don't you give her too much rain? Try to <laughs> yeah. Also, I don't the rain rhyming rain with pain. Yeah. Um, I know your song has to rhyme a lot. Yeah. But honestly, he's implying a relationship between rain and pain. And the relationship <laughs> is. Well, we all know we're not in any pain when we have a lot of rain, but it kind of sucks. There's too much rain. So not enough. Don't do the rain, but also don't do the pain. It's a lot to ask. Yeah, but I've also heard something related to gain if she doesn't have pain, by the way. And it's not in the song, but I'm just telling you that if she doesn't have any. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, just a, a, a cumbersome little uh, rhyme. Yeah. I feel like she's camping. <laughs> <laughs> not in a sinister way, not like a smuggler. I think she's just, just like, I'm going camping with the girls. And he's making too big of a deal about it. And he's a big baby. Because <laughs> my baby hates to cry. Why? Oh, that's he's been my baby hates to cry is, I bet that sounded good in his head, but I don't know what it means. I mean, I know. Uh, I think it's a big assumption on his part because I, I think his baby doesn't mind crying and I think a lot of babies like to cry. Yeah. He gets it out. Yeah, that's right. Also, I think he's really projecting. He really hopes she misses just being at home a lot more than yeah. she probably does. Yeah. He's just assuming that if you're not at the house, you must be sleeping on the ground. Yeah. yeah. Hey, if you're not here with me in Long Island... Well, I mean, there's, there's nowhere else to be, right? It's all ground. <laughs> it's, yeah, he has like an object permanence problem, but with buildings. <laughs> he probably has, when I was in high school, we had some relative come visit us who'd never been to Tucson, and they were surprised we weren't all riding horses. <laughs> I, I found that really funny that they thought I probably rode a horse to school. Amazing. And also, what a dumb assumption about Arizona. That would be a sad existence for a gaunt, you know, dehydrated horse. <laughs> <laughs> it's 119 and I got to ride my horse. Yep. In flowing wells. Yeah, you get to high school, you tie it up out front. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then you uh, you go in and you learn what? Well, you, you you learned your letters. You, you learn your letters. <laughs> yep. Just because. Yeah. Eventually, you're gonna have to write your mark somewhere. Like if you go to the bank or something, we don't want you to write your mark. To, I'll learn how to make your X. <laughs> <laughs> so when well, you can sign the deed. Yeah. So that's Billy Joel for every city. It's like, oh yeah, outside in no 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 houses. <laughs> Just the one I'm in. The only house I can perceive. <laughs> uh, I remember when we moved there from Belgium. 
uh, I was how I was not young enough to think this, but with it was like thirteen or so, and uh, we're like, oh, we're moving to Arizona. We're the desert. We're going to be living in the desert, and I really pictured like dunes and nothingness, and I don't know what I thought we were going to live in, <laughs> but I thought it would be like just dunes and camels. And then we we came over the hill and we're like, we're getting very close to where we're going to live and we came over the hill and I was like, oh, there's a lot of vegetation. How is this a desert? <laughs> I clearly I don't know what desert means. Yeah, I thought it just meant no plants <laughs> at all. Everything's dead and desolate. And yeah, and that is a kind of desert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've learned. Now, there's another thing you learned that you only learn by leaving Arizona and then coming back later. Or yeah. it was true for me, which is it's very pretty. Tremendously pretty. But I didn't think that when I lived there. And it rains a lot. Mm -hmm. That was shocking to me. It's just that the rain isn't very useful because uh, if you haven't lived there, Tucson, Arizona, and I think a lot of the desert has what they call monsoon season. Right. And it just rains like the Dickens, but also it's too much rain for the rain to collect uh, a lot in the underground in the like wells and stuff. So a lot of it is just um, design. You know, it's really good at washing away bad <laughs> cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, dummies get trapped in it. Yep. But yeah, the I mean, it's all sandy soil so it just it doesn't stay wet long yeah um but it's pretty yeah and it you, also it rains like hell but for 20 minutes exactly did you ever go swimming in a wash after a rain no i did no we had a wash where i lived but it was very rough mm. it was like rapids <laughs> but i do remember a kids going down with like a fishing pole <laughs> And I was like, there can't be, this was empty yesterday. The fish is not automatically fish in it. Wow, that's pretty if awesome. You stumbled upon it not knowing anything. You were like, oh, look, a little creek. And, but if you were there the day before, <laughs> and you could ride your bike through the bottom of it. <laughs> that's fantastic. I that guess great that's how stupid kids are. Kids are dumb. That's so great. Yeah, it was great. Oh, that's so good. Did, did they catch anything? No. A case of the wasted afternoons. That's what they caught. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty fantastic. Right. All right, so you got the last one. Hey, Lord. <laughs> Would you look out for her tonight? Because it gets rough along the way said now this song seems strange is just because i don't know how to pray ah we were right yep i want you to give her peace of mind and if you ever find the time won't you tell her i miss her every day so it's a long trip i guess i do like it's a little queer but i do like confessing that this song seems rough. <laughs> I don't know how to pray. Um, and it does, it's not like it's a beautiful, perfectly constructed prayer. And then he says, I don't really know how to do this. Yeah. Says, no, it's pretty clear that you don't know. Yeah. The, yeah. The same. Don't know, how to pray. don't know how road trips work. <laughs> <laughs> don't know if there are other buildings. Yeah. That's a. Don't know where she went, apparently. Also, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe your relationship's not as good as you think because she didn't tell you where she's going. And you know what I always like that I shouldn't like? Um, it's uncharacteristic of me to like this, but I like it when a song says this song. Oh, yeah? And it admits that it's a song. <laughs> like that. Well, that's pretty great. I When Elton John's Your Song came out, I lost my mind. I was like, this guy's a fucking genius. Uh -huh. He's telling us the song, why he wrote the song that he's singing. I, it hurt my brain. That's a, yeah, that's a good song. Here's what, 
I couldn't get over when I found out. Because I always liked Elton John. I like your song by Elton John. And I like your song, whatever your song is too. But I like okay. your song. Um, and the uh, the lyric, I where he can't remember what color her eyes is, always seems really funny to me because I'm like, you don't like it that much. But yeah. regardless. So I was always like, man, this guy's brilliant. And it wasn't until much later that I found out he writes the music and Bernie Taupin writes the lyrics. Right. And so upon reflection, I'm like, no, Bernie Taupin's brilliant. You're fine. I like you. You're the front guy. But that was actually almost a little bit heartbreaking when I realized that in a way. Yeah, right? Yeah. It was very weird. I remember I knew that uh, intellectually. And then I watched the movie Rocket Man, which I don't know if you've seen. Not yet. Uh, fucking rules. Rules real hard. Nice. Uh, uh, and you know that relationship is explored and the, even like the way they did it was so clinical where he would like Bernie would sit in his house and like write songs and put them in envelopes and like take the train down to Elton and they'd have lunch together and he'd hand them all the envelopes and then take the train back and it's like oh that's so weird yeah it's so weird um well, Elton John's a peculiar fellow. Um, you know the movie um, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band? Uh -huh. Which uh, anybody who doesn't know what that is, the Beatles are not in it. It's a bunch of the 70s greatest stars and George Burns <laughs> uh, doing a musical based on the songs from the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And... Um, he uh, Elton John made a point of talking I'm trying to remember who the other artist was he talked another artist out of being in it and said it would be terrible for his career and it turned out because Elton John wanted to do it <laughs> and that's what happened um so Elton John is a little um shady <laughs> <laughs> I just find that very right. Yeah. I remember when um George Michael was going through drug addiction or whatever, Elton John came out with some statement about how you know I visited with him and was was helping him, blah blah blah. And then George Michael came out with a statement that said, No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> ah, great. Probably Bernie Taupin did. Yeah, right. that's probably what happened. <laughs> he missed his train uh fuck yeah it. i'm glad he's a little bit of a dick oh yeah i don't mind at all he's just a, he's a classic honestly he is a classic queen yeah man he just is he is of his people he represents he's <laughs> just represent and no doubt he dealt with a lot of crap of people being mean and having to be suppressed sexually. It just can't be cool. Nope. I mean, I was never su suppressed as far as my sexuality, and I still didn't enjoy it. I can't imagine <laughs> if I right. had been suppressed. <laughs> I still found it mostly unpleasant trying to figure stuff out. Oh, yeah. If I was also told, but you can't like the thing you like. Oh, yeah, buddy. So, yeah, like anytime, by the way, related, anytime I hear that Ellen isn't entirely the nicest person in the world, I was uh, thinking, yeah, you remember when you ruined her career because she told you she liked girls? I don't yeah. really care that she's kind of uh, secretly a little mean. I don't care. Yeah, not and not surprising. Yeah, why wouldn't you be a little bit she, mean? Uh, she likes things the way she likes them. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, you're on guard all the time. Huh, weird. <laughs> Weird yeah. when you got a fuck ton of death threats from dummies because you said, hey, you know, I found something that made me a little bit happy. They're like, no, you can't do that. Oh, get her. <laughs> get her. Get her. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, then the music, it does that weird, not even weird. I don't want to say weird because this is not one of those like, hey, why is there a motorcycle here? <laughs> this right. isn't that. It's the music stops. And just for a second... And then we come back in with just a nice instrumental. Yeah, real funky. Yeah, it's very pretty. 
there's a part with the piano where he just goes crazy and it sounds so nice. It's beautiful. Did you listen to the Dolly Parton version as well? No, I didn't know there was a Dolly Parton. Oh, come on now. I'll link to that. Dolly oh, Parton. Great. Dolly Parton doing a cover of a Billy Joel song is a delight. Uh, which do you like better? It's you will listen to it and I think you will find that it's just two different experiences and it's not even worth comparing. Oh, fantastic. Um, obviously, the instrumentation on hers is a hundred times better, but it doesn't have the shagginess that I think it needs to be uh, charming. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think it's also cool that he's like, hey, I don't know how to pray. And then here's my attempt, which is sort of also like, I, hey, I don't know how to do bluegrass, but here's my attempt. Yeah. Um, it's kind of nice that those match up a little bit, which I'm Indeed. sure was not, not intentional, but it works out nicely. I'm going to yeah. take a stab at two things. <laughs> Pray in yeah. bluegrass. No weird bridge. No weird bridge. Um, some good switching up with the singing it gets it gets a little yelly mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah no weird bridge just like chugging because man a bridge would ruin this song i think <laughs> yeah just slow it way down and talk about something else for a while yeah he's done and he's done that every once in a while we've talked about it where you're like oh that bridge why does it change so much but nope this is just the song chugs along and you know me, I like it when it ends, like a song with an ending. Yep. I really do. I really I appreciate the effort you made into trying. <laughs> but yeah, that would that's a perfectly fine. Uh... Hey, by the way, for you, is that backwards or no, can you read it? I can read that. Okay. <laughs> that's a little joke on uh, someone's headstone. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what... Uh, Clue uh, for the... I think I might know it. I think that's Big Shot. <laughs> it's not Big Shot, but that's a good guess. No? No. You had to have the last laugh? No, oh, last word. You had to have the last word last night. Oh, that could have been. I was oh, thinking... this one's ridiculously on the nose. This is an easy one. This is the title of a song. Uh, joke on a Grave. <laughs> Famous song. <laughs> Joke on a Grave. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The next week we'll be talking about Joke on a Grave, which is one of my favorites off of uh, off of The Stranger. <laughs> you remember Joke on a Grave? Yeah, joke on a Grave. Oh, I made some, made some bad ones. I don't know what was one. I don't know. I uh, guess I could have used another headstone from somebody else and what they had said. Sure. Famous last words. That's it. Yep. That's all it is. That's yep. an easy one. We've, I was uh, going to do... Is there I was, a famous person's headstone right there? And you know, that might be where I went wrong, but I looked up famous <laughs> last words. I looked up famous last words, the headstones, and I liked this one. Great. And I was going to put um, Nick Fury's headstone, but I don't like the headstone itself. You, <laughs> Why are, Nick Fury's? Because he's got a great quote on his. Do you know what the quote is, right? I don't think I do. Um, um, and I will come to him with furious anger because it's the quote from Pulp Fiction. Okay, got it. And it was a little inside joke for, uh, you know, it was fan service, I believe it's called. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I will say Marvel does fan service probably better than anybody they That's they probably true they get it they're like listen we really enjoy your 15 dollars so yeah so here's something back yeah here's another character like everybody by the way clamoring ah we gotta bring back the daredevil from the netflix show and enough people did that they went all right <laughs> yeah we don't care yeah that's fine but they're not going to be bring back jessica jones because they're like well i know you like her too but you don't like her as much you're not talking about it as much and we don't really want to do it <laughs> yeah um it's so it must be awfully great for them 
to have i mean you have a literal universe yeah like hey what if uh fucking ant-man wants to hang out with a uh, white tiger okay great yeah <laughs> they're uh disney by the way i'm not getting paid by disney so i don't know why i'm doing this but they have a, another marvel movie that's just for streaming it's a one-hour movie obviously never meant to be in the theater called werewolf by night it's worth watching it's a good little <laughs> halloween movie oh that's great yeah it's based on a and dumb he's... comic <laughs> and by dumb comic i mean dumb by comic book standards it's not a great comic but it's fun fucking that's all you need man yeah yeah i would give you well yeah i don't want to give away give it away because i like the hook of this one a lot all right. Where do yeah. I find it? Uh, on Disney Plus. On Disney Plus. Great. I have that. Werewolf by Night. And it's going to be one of your first um, selections if you go to the Marvel se- section because it's new yep. and we're near Halloween. So it's a perfect little Halloween thing. You know what yeah. I like about it? And this is something I like about old Disney. I like the way old Disney used to scare you in their movies. That very weird scary but friendly like the headless horseman the cartoon scared the crap out of me and i think it still would but <laughs> it's it's all just like imagery and you know dark corners and stuff there's no blood at all really there's yeah. implied blood plus it's got kind of a like this werewolf by night looks like something that was made in the 40s intentionally oh, cool. like they do that style i right. the credit sequence is way too fancy calligraphy or it's uh, fucking fun it's really it's fun delightful yeah you will enjoy the hour you spent watching it there's a fun little nothing it's nothing but it's just a good nothing oh i just i just am being told that you're being sued by disney oh damn it i should it's something <laughs> <laughs> You're barely you're not authorized to advertise it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm highly. Sure, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have a trivia question for me? I bet you I, do. You know, I do. I have a Billy Joel trivia question. And then you just reminded me of a very cool Disney trivia question that oh, I heard at like pub trivia one night. Well, we can do uh, both. That I managed to get. No, I think we got it wrong. And then we were all so mad at ourselves because we had thought. Anyway, um, there's a list somewhere of the 50 most hated Disney villains. One of whom, there's one Disney villain on that list that never appears on screen. Oh. A Disney villain? that doesn't appear on screen. Number 11, most hated Disney villain. The Hunter. Correct. The yeah. Hunter from Bambi. The Hunter from Bambi, absolutely. Yep. Well and, done. And they're right. Although he should be number one. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy a lot. God. Yeah. The fucking forest fire. Oh man, I saw a video the other day speaking of Disney, and it was a, just a TikTok. Somebody filmed their little girl watching uh the what's the one with the little baby lion? A uh, lion king, <laughs> anyway. Watch <laughs> a lion, you lion, lion baby watching Lion King for the first time, and they showed the moment when the dad dies and oh. I was like, oh boy, this is, and she's having so much fun watching it. And she, at one point she goes, I could cry now thinking about it. Cause at one point she goes, he's going to go help his daddy. He's going to go help his daddy. And you're like, oh no, you're going to learn a lesson. Disney taught us a long time ago, which is Disney will kill a guy. Boy, <laughs> Disney will fuck you up, man. It's, yeah. And the moment she realizes it, luckily there's a parent who's like, okay, we'll stop recording now and i'm just gonna go talk to her but lord oh man i you know i had not seen a disney movie in 20 years at one point and then some years ago i ended up watching frozen with a little five-year-old girl 
and I was like, oh, right. Yeah. They're super bleak. Yeah. They always got to fucking murder somebody <laughs> early on. Yeah. And then you have to, then you get your movie. It's like, right. And I was like, oh, no, should, should kids be watching this? And of course, they end up fine. And then they never stop singing the fucking songs. Yeah. And I guess the deeper truth is that it was thought by a lot of people who told stories, even prior to Disney, that, yeah, they do need to see that. Because yeah. the, you know, storytelling, the drama is a way to process real world feelings that you're going to encounter. And, you, and, you know, when it, it also helps that like they started making movies in like the 30s. Yeah. When kids were a little less fragile. And uh, this is another little piece of trivia. Uh, Walt Disney coined the term Jews harp. <laughs> uh, at, at a cocktail party. Yeah. <laughs> cocktail party. Yeah. Yeah. Have that have that play the juice harp for us. I he was talking about black guy to use a different word. It's a very unpleasant party. Very unpleasant party. <laughs> oh, for the staff, for sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh. thank you. I'll I'll do my uh, Billy Joel trivia question. Uh Fan service. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I will give you a range, a margin of error, plus or minus three. Okay. How many top 40 songs has Billy Joel had? Top 40? Mm -hmm. Oh. 17. No. 33. Wow. And see, I was like, is 17 too many? Because it seems like it's hard to get a top. But yeah. 30, I was I was half. That's great. <laughs> That's really wonderful. And awesome. yeah. Yeah, man. Just, it's funny because um I saw I, you know, we, we talked last week about how like there are some youngies who show up at concerts. Yeah, lots. And man, he has made his damn mark. That's pretty great. Really great. Yeah, there's just, just nothing wrong with Billy Joel, you guys. Hey, and nothing wrong with our reception this week for some reason. How about that? Um, we should. This is, what did we do? We're, this is episode 65. Next week uh -huh. will be 66. 66. What, would, what would you like to talk about? Well, you know, I got to looking and uh, I decided I like Piano Man as an album. Yeah. And another good old Sky Comma song. Ain't No Crime. Ain't no crime. Yeah, Piano Man. It's funny that we're finally coming around to talking about that album, but we just have a rule for one of the songs. So that's all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Established in episode one. It's also, you know, I think you get burned on the idea because you're like, oh, that fucking song. So tired of that song. He's tired of that song. And you forget there's nine other tracks. Or yeah, other that's right. It's not just an album with that song over and over again. <laughs> right. Like, oh, right. It's, it's just part of... I recommend... I wasn't sure what the hit was going to be. Yeah. I recommended this once before, but I'll mention it again. There's In one of those shows, and you can find the clip by just looking up Billy Joel talking about Piano Man. But in one of those shows where they interview, it might have been actor studio, but when they had Billy Joel on it, but yeah. Or that other show that was the same show, but for musicians. I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, yeah. But there's, well, he's talking, so yeah, there's a part where he's talking about Piano Man and how it's basically, there's not a lot to it musically. Right. And he said, one of my favorite things is he'll walk into a bar and there will be a guy playing piano. That will be that bar's Piano Man. And that person will see Billy Joel and go, ah. And I'm saying, da, 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 da. and then you can see he says he likes seeing it in the piano guy's face when he realizes, oh, there ain't much more. <laughs> and you have to repeat it, and you're like, oh, this ain't that fun to play. <laughs> Great. Uh, Self-effacing oh. Billy Joel, which is one of my favorite Billy Joels, is just the fact really? that he's self-aware. <laughs> yeah, the best. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sing us a song. He's the piano man. That's what they say. That's how it goes. And then he says, no, I'm going to play a song I like. Uh, then I'll play it. That's what he said. I'll play it uh, right before I get on the chopper. 